Hello and welcome to 15th lecture of course on data enabled tribological engineering from experiments to predictive models. Topic of this lecture is nano tribology. In my view, our nano tribology is very vast topic. In the present lecture, we will introduce a topic nano tribology, which is crucial in understanding the influence of surface adhesion forces on tribo interfaces, particularly when the size of the component decreases from macro to micro to nano skin. As the size of the component decreases, these forces become more important, like the friction force will be very important in this case. The mechanism of nano lubrication in such a situation generally deviates from a reported in a traditional lubrication mechanisms. Our primary focus will be on the nanoparticle lubrication, we will be trying to introduce some particles in a lubricant and then we see the effect of those nanoparticles. An overview of the various states of nano lubricants including liquid, vapor and solid will be presented. Nanoparticles composed of the metals, non-metals and ceramic substances will be discussed. The choice of nanoparticles is determined by the need of heat of transfer characteristics of the lubricant in addition to the friction of wear. So, we are trying to do something slightly different, we are saying the heat transfer rate will be really important when we are talking about the nano lubrication, reason being that there will be mechanisms which we really require to account the heat transfer. Let me start with uh, some knowledge which we have already acquired from earlier lectures. We see that low viscosity oil is very much required, what is the reason? Because it will cause a lesser hydrodynamic friction that will cause a lesser heat generation, of course it happens, but what will be the happening? The surfaces may be in contact and that is why we say the complete separation of the surface is doubtful, that is why we require additives or nanoparticles. So, that is where the importance comes over here, we want low viscosity, but either we go ahead with the additives or we go with the nanoparticles. Second thing comes to lubricant functionalities, we assume that the, there will be need of the reduction in friction and wear, but in addition liquid lubricant what we were talking about is that they need to really transport the debris or foreign particle from tribo surfaces to the tank from where the oil will get recirculated. In addition, whatever the we are adding a nanoparticles or additives, those should be transferred to the right places, so that it we get enhanced lubrication mechanism. So, these are the two important thing, in addition we require heat transfer. So, these are the important points and we need to really account this, however, in the present lecture we will not be able to explore all, in subsequent lecture we will come one by one on these points. Another one uh, which we already have learned that uh, surface design uh, or maybe say surface texturing need to be integrated with the lubrication mechanism, so that overall reduction in friction losses may occur and because of the, this there is a possibility of the minimum uh, uh, emissions. There are typical example gearbox and engine which have shown that if you really go ahead with this kind of lubrication mechanism emissions will come down also. In addition, we will learn something like uh, we should go uh, or adopt the uh, standard approach and we can take uh, some uh, in the base something like ASTM standards, it can be anything else also. Reason being that all the standards are available, we want to test the viscosity, we can have uh, ASTM standards, pore point characterization, volatility, shear rate, wear rate or wear depth, wear mechanism everywhere there are some of some standards and we need to follow that standards, so that overall the results are confirming to other people who have already done research in these areas. We also need to think about the selection of appropriate lubricant, what are the uh, points on that? We may think about the chemical characteristics, physical characteristics, composition, not only this the degradation traits also whether a lubricant will be losing its additives or they will get a degraded or there will be some sort of contaminants which will come from environment and then will there be some sort of a filtration like a moisture if comes in the oil whether we have a additives to separate the moisture it should not get the, on the type of surfaces. So, these are the important aspects uh, in continuation again we uh, learn something about the coating we can broadly classify coating in two categories, we say soft coating which have a hardness lesser than 10 uh, GPA and hard coating which have a 
hardness of something like a more than 10 GPA. Why we are talking about the hard coating? Reason being we, we really require a low friction and low wear rate. The hardness and the wear rate are related. We say hard uh, solid lubricant may exhibit higher wear resistance. So, here we are using the word if you are making a coating that to utilizing the solid lubricant it may give higher resistance towards the wear or it will cause a lesser wear rate. So, we need to think about uh, not only friction not only wear in addition also the temperature. So, overall properties are really required in a much higher level as we are going for the nano travelogy. Let us take example of the coating which uh, comes from uh, carbon altrops. The we uh, in these days the DLC coating is very well known graphite, graphene, geo, SiO2 also. <clears throat> what are the importance about this? They have a self lubricating properties first thing. They are environmental friendly and they are also high heat transfer rate. So, these things are important that is why the we go hard with in these days the carbon altrops uh, either in nanoparticles or in a form of the coating even when we use a grease we try to utilize this kind of particles. So, overall results are uh, favorable or from a sustainability point of view they are very good. Now, we say the earlier formulation of a DLC exhibited some sort of uh, residual stresses. So, more or less uh, that time um, and the DLC were not very common reason being that it was causing some sort of delamination. So, it becomes ineffective, but the term also the coefficient of friction was lower something like a 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. Now, in these days with the advanced uh, techniques coating techniques. Now, DLC is a getting very popular and uh, I believe that almost all engine components are getting coated with a DLC. So, what we see effectiveness of the coating is largely depends on the which kind of process we are choosing whether we PVD, sputter, evaporation we have already discussed about all those things. One more important thing comes of the SP2 to SP3 ratio. SP3 is basically related to hardness, SP2 is related to the uh, softness. So, that means we are getting kind of the hybrid combination that we require a softer and we require a harder and that is why the DLC has a both the features that is very important. Not only this we uh, can play with the bias voltage energy and the surface temperature. We see another one because of the, um, the good progress in PVD and CVD equipment. Now, there are more chances of the increasing utilization of MOS2, WS2, DLC coating, soft metal and polymers, even the polymers are also getting coated. So, this is uh, important for us that with the increase in uh, technology or equipment which can process a PVD and CVD, now coatings are getting more popular and then they can be utilized as a wear resist for wear resistance as well as for the uh, friction reduction. We can think about a nano travelogy uh, as a the two separate word we say that uh, travelogy we have a discussed to some extent when we come to the nano basically we are talking about the MEMS or maybe say uh, electronic components which are much lesser in a size. Reason being that the surface forces or friction forces are uh, on a higher side and in this situation whatever we have explored earlier maybe we were performing the experiments naturally the, those kind of experiments need to be different now reason being that we need to perform experiment and we need to have a equipment like AFM, TAM so that we are able to observe whatever we have done that is correct or not. In addition we really require a good detailed theoretical modeling also most of the things which we have done uh, they are for the macro to micro, but come to the nano level we require a separate theoretical analysis. In addition now we really require computational approaches. So, overall combination is here we say that we require more experiments or the slightly different equipments which can be um, utilized for the experiments theoretical calculation, computational. So, that is why we say that uh, nano travelogy is a vast topic, it required maybe separate subject and we are trying to give a some sort of overview. So, that overall results can be uh, moved in the right way or uh, we start thinking in the uh, in the direction. We say in this situation now uh, we really not only friction wear and lubrication, there is another one term is coming nano indentation because a wear cannot be easily uh, evaluated. So, we try to go ahead with nano indentation, even the cracks of the uh, 
uh, nano level we need to see whether it will be causing us some sort of fracture. So, naturally some theory needs to be changed that is why we, we really record a separate subject as such on a nano travelogy. Hope uh, and then the, there are a uh, lot of research going on and that can get combined in a one good book in a future. And more one more thing is that we are trying to think about the advancements uh, in the lubricating techniques also. Whatever the techniques we were using now we are thinking slightly ahead of that where the lubrication technique can be improved particularly for the MAMS what we say the micro electromechanical systems. Now, what are the issues when why we are talking the separate subject is really required because we are talking about the atomic or molecular mechanisms that happens particularly the boundary level whatever uh, when the, the two components are getting joined they are getting separated they are getting displaced everywhere the uh, phenomena happens at the atomic or molecular me mechanism level or maybe uh, at that level atomic or molecular level. So, that is why we really require a separate uh, course uh, on a nano travelogy as such. Another point comes um, in the earlier we were thinking about only friction and wear here we required a six essential function one is a friction which we already discussed uh, another one comes to the wear rate to be reduced. This is another one that the nano component do not have uh, bigger volume and then, uh, cooling will become uh, very important. And uh, whatever the wear debris generated even the nano level the cleaning will be required. This uh, the smaller components are also uh, subjected to corrosion even the small, smallest corrosion may create a problem uh, and uh, we really require to avoid this corrosion. In addition uh, whatever the thermal energy or hydromechanical energy transmission it should be effective and we should account those things. So, let me take one example of the carbon nanotube which we also worked on the carbon nanotube. Now, carbon nanotube structure is very good and but difficult to implement this one. So, you can see here the carbon nanotube its thickness can be a 1 to 2 nanometer and length can be something like a 50 nanometer. Now, this is a single uh, wall uh, CNT this is a multi wall CNT. Now, what is the advantage they are hollow as such and then uh, because of the hollowness they are very flexible it can be bent by 30 degree 60 degree even 90 degree. So, this is very important now in two surfaces when we are using this kind of CNT and is well distributed what will happen the whatever the asperities carbon nanotubes can get attached to those surfaces and now carbon nanotube is providing lot of flexibility and they are very hard also. So, no friction and no wear in future we can think about uh, using nano travelogy to make uh, zero wear and zero friction also. This is a possible um, when we are talking about uh, this kind of uh, structures uh, the CNT structure which are kind of one dimensional are uh, uh, really gives a very good results. Now, we were talking about the MAMS in previous slide. So, let us uh, let me introduce some some sort of lubrication mechanism which are utilized for the MEMS. When we say particularly earlier most of the thing uh, micro to micro uh, abrasion was dominating feature of the friction, but comes to the MEMS or the nano level addition is the main mechanism. Earlier we were counting uh, when uh, abrasion plus erosion it was contributing something like a 62 percent and coming to addition it was coming contributing maybe some 14 to 20 percent. So, roughly 20 percent earlier. Now, in this case quite possible the addition becomes uh, maybe uh, 50 to 60 percent or uh, maybe even more while uh, this abrasion may come down. So, there is a reverse rules when you come out the uh, nano travelogy abrasion may not play dominant role addition plays a dominant role. So, let me introduce this topic we say the for a mic, uh, MEMS or the micro electro mechanical system rubbing contact or tribo contact will occur and then uh, we really require this uh, kind of a mechanism which will work for the number of uh, years or number of days and we do not have a lubrication mechanism which can continuously be provided to the uh, MEMS system. So, what we say uh, interface must possess a factor and long lasting lubrication mechanism 
we do not have a process to pumping the lubricant again and again the way we are doing in the micro to micro machines, but in a, in a particularly when come to the nano level, we really required that interface should have a long lasting lubrication mechanism. How do we do that? We say lubrication flow must be must heal its own and in previous uh, lecture lecture 14 we, have, we mentioned that there are some sort of uh, coating or material like particularly soft metal they heal uh, the, the cracks is are generated because of the heating. So, there is a self compensation happens over here while coming to the MEMS we really need to provide uh, that to the na nanometer level it cannot be MM level. So, refill themselves to keep a low friction low wear uh, thing always what will happen if you are not able to do it adhesive force will increase restrict movement of the device relative motion will be stopped and may even, even lead to the uh, collapse of the structure. So, whole device will start malfunctioning that is why the addition becomes a very important role particularly when we are talking about the nano travelogy or MAMS system and we really require a lubrication mechanism actually we really require something different. So, what is the different in this case? Now, we have a something like a vapor phase uh, lubrication, we form a vapor up of course, and again it cannot be in a high pressure, it cannot be in high temperature, we need to really keep in that in the mind. So, what we say the vapor phase lubrication it delivers a lubricant molecule to the surface through gas diffusion and then once it is uh, reaches to the surfaces then there should be the adsorption. So, there is a slightly different we are not using liquid lubricant we are using a vapor formation is kind of the gas form and diffusion and which has a some sort of potential uh, uh, additives which are also the nano level and they get adsorbed on the surfaces. So, we say the potential to uniformly covering all the surfaces it should not happen that nano surfaces or micro surfaces some portion is getting more additive some portion is getting lesser additive. So, really we have a challenges that potential should be in a manner that uh, all complete surfaces are getting uh, this kind of uh, lubricant otherwise uh, we will have a some sort of a misalignment. So, we say the potential to uniformly covering all the surfaces including those are the deeply embedded. So, vapor lubrication or vapor phase lubrication is a new uh, thing which is really required. Earlier I have seen also the big uh, rolling element bearing with a gas uh, particularly compressed gas they really uh, the, the use a lubricant and the lubricant may be in a kind of fine jet when it reaches naturally it is a high pressure gas may be say slightly above the atmospheric, but here we do not really require a pressure also reason being it will not be covering complete surface if you go with the pressure it will look at the leakage path and then wherever the uh, whichever the thing comes in the path it will get lubricated other parts will not. That is why we are saying in the nano lubrication or MAM systems we really require this kind of uh, uh, the vapor phase lubrication that with a lesser pressure it should not go in a higher pressure. Now, another one we say that we need to regulate the thickness of adsorbed layer only to few nanometer as I mentioned it should not happen in some places the 1 nanometer some places the 5 nanometer from some places the 10 nanometer it will really uh, cause a more more problem. So, we really require regulation of the thickness now that can be done by partial pressure of the lubricant if we are going for the high pressure if you look at the leakage path it will really in the, in the give a some sort of coating to the only few parts not to all parts. And another thing is that what we want isotherm to be maintained reason being that if the vapor is a slightly on higher temperature and the temperature increases um, and then the, of some components naturally there will be some sort of malfunction. So, that is why and that can only be happening when we are trying to maintain the partial pressure. So, this is very important. However, another thing is that that we ensure that there is a high collision rate whatever the vapor phase we are sending and then surface here there is a high collision in one go two go may not happen. So, that is why they are assuming that up to 100 uh, collision per second should happen with the surfaces. So, that um, and then the molecules or um, additives are really uh, given to the right surfaces. So, that is why we see that um, in the high collision rate between the gas phase lubricant molecule and surface happens. Another one again we can't uh, avoid uh, we can say that there will be possibility of the deabsorption absorption and deabsorption is a continuous phenomena it is not only that we do absorption and after uh, on the surfaces absorb the molecules and will not uh, 
on the de absorb it will be a continuous phenomena. So, upon the de absorption of the uh, lubricant molecules exposed surface primarily uh, promptly re passivated again that means, if it is some molecules are getting de absorbed there should be sufficient other molecules to get absorbed on the surface. So, the surface should not remain virgin or maybe uh, it get uh, again uh, some sort of layer. So, so, overall results are in a favor. So, what we can say to reduce uh, free uh, addition of the condensed where liquid in the cap another one thing there is a possibility of the capillary formation between the contact. So, we do not want the capillary formation should happen for that purpose uh, um, we try to keep uh, surface tension very low. In classical or traditional tribology we uh, find the capillary action will be helpful it will really pass the lubricant to the right places. But here we want the low uh, level we say that uh, it should not uh, pass uh, through the capillary action and the surfaces uh, should have uh, the surface tension of the lubricant should be low of course in addition should have a high molar uh, volume and vapor pressure of the liquid. So, these are the slightly different than the classical typology what we use in this case and another one we say that the lubricant molecule that are adsorbed can undergo tribochemical reactions. So, the here again we need to keep in mind it should not cause a corrosion because we already have learned in um, boundary lubrication or mixed lubrication that liquid lubricant get adsorbed by two mechanisms one is a physical adsorption and there is a chemical absorption and beyond that there is a some sort of chemical corrosion which we are we record active sulfur active chloride active phosphorus we do not want that also happens if it is really goes through the tribochemical reaction and then it causes accelerated wear that should be avoided. So, we need to account this kind of features and uh, that is why we say the MEMS lubrication or nano tribology itself should be a separate subject where the number of things need to be accounted. We discuss about the DLC we say earlier the DLC uh, coatings were done to keep a low coefficient of friction, but where it was not low reason being it getting delaminated. Now, there are, there are uh, improved manufacturing processes, fabrication processes. So, we are able to get a good DLC. Now, why the DLC is getting importance? So, the reason is that DLC is a amorphous and it has a some sort of a short range ordered phase of the mixed sp3 uh, bond and sp2 uh, type of the bonding. So, this is very important which call is a graphite and this is a diamond. So, this is goes for the hardness, this goes for the softness and we are able to really make a right combination of this using the DLC. So, again we am using the word DLC, DLC does not mean a one kind of coating, it can have a huge range of the coatings also. So, now it depends on the knowledge domain, person's expertization, how they are able to generate a good coating for the individual component. So, even the one method, but we can generate many, many things. So, we say DLC exhibits uh, unusual combination of tribological and mechanical properties. So, we can really generate many coatings as such low coefficient of friction, low wear, relative high hardness and, uh, and the high elastic modulus. So, here is not only PVD sometimes we use a plasma assisted coating or sometimes you will use the word plasma enhanced coating and this is what we are seeing the SP3, uh, SP2 by SP3 what is the relation and what is the ratio of sp2 to sp3 of course the coating cost also will change uh, somewhat uh, process parameters will change when we are trying to utilize this one and this is how i'm trying to show one of the plasma assisted uh, cvd coating in this case the hardness itself is around 20 to 30 hr and i mean giga pascal which is very high and they are we were uh, maintaining the coefficient of friction because here the hardness is on the higher side coefficient of friction is slightly moving up Coating thickness is only 1 to 2 micron, so that is very important. And thermal conductivity is a 150 to 150, uh, 100 uh, to 150, so it is very, very important to keep in mind because copper has a thermal conductivity of the 400, and we are trying to reach to the other kind of the thermal conductivity, and that too uh, with a coating of 1 to 2 micron, which is really important. Now, 
we talk about uh, solid lubrication that is a DLC, we talk about the vapor lubrication which is required for the MEMS. We are coming to the nanoparticle lubrication, reason being uh, this becomes a more popular, no it is not only for the nano, it can be used for the micro lubrication, it can be used for the macro lubrication. So, it has a much more usages compared to the nano label uh, alone. So, they what they do in this case they form the firm uh, of the nanoparticles, uh, the nanoparticle we generally say range is a 1 to 100 nanometers, beyond that generally we do not entertain of course, lesser than that we have found that a lot of agglomeration happens and we are not able to separate that. So, these are the we say that uh, these additives can be utilized that too in a base oil and base oil can be even a water or it can be glyco, I can use any kind of the base uh, fluid liquid. Now, these in additives can include the as I mentioned the carbon based which are uh, have a excellent uh, thermal conductivity which is really required for the better heat dissipation. We do have a ma uh, metal nanoparticles again the, as I mentioned thermal conductivity of copper is very high, silver is also high. We use the silver nanoparticles particularly for the MR fluid to enhance the thermal conductivity. So, these are the gold uh, particles already been utilized for the MAMS and NAMS uh, systems. So, they make a some sort of protective film, how they make a uh, protective film I will show in the next slide. So, uh, coming to ceramic uh, titanium oxide and aluminum oxide have been utilized and uh, often they are uh, used as a extreme pressure additives also or extreme pressure proper having properties. So, when we are talking about the sulfur or we are talking about the phosphorus to be discarded, this kind of particles can be utilized in those situations to provide uh, anti wear property, provide uh, extreme pressure properties which is really required for the lubrication. So, otherwise we say the nanoparticle uh, lubrication is uh, much more uh, common particularly for complete tribology, it is not only for the nano tribology, it is used also, it is useful also for the nano tribology. Now, coming to the molybdenum disulfide or WS2 also, they also have a good properties, they have anti friction properties, they have uh, particularly used for extreme condition, particularly high temperature where the lubricants are a little difficult, uh, they get uh, oxidized also. Coming to the nano polymer nanoparticles and this is also of course, for low temperature application we can go for the polymer nanoparticles. Now, in addition uh, we are talking about the mechanism of the triboform formation, I will show you the few sketches in the next slide. Now, it can involve the physical and chemical adsorption which we already discussed uh, in the previous lectures. Now, another one is that uh, reaction uh, should be balanced and protect the interface, it should not cause excess uh, uh, corrosion and then uh, unnecessary uh, fast degradation. If we are uh, designing some coating for the some time maybe say 15,000 kilometer and then we should have a balance, uh, uh, a perfect balance for that kind of reaction. When another point comes uh, most of the time we are uh, using additives so that in situ wherever there is a need that uh, particles can come into contact with the, the asperities and do the right function as such. We say that in this case it really can give a superior uh, anti friction and anti wear properties. However, the new thing uh, which we also learn in previous lecture is that we can go ahead with uh, some sort of uh, nano structure on the surfaces or we do a texturing of the surface. So, the lubrication retention remains there. And in addition, we can provide a super hydrophobic properties. It's not getting sprayed; it remains there on the surface, and it doesn't get, get uh, squeezed out. So, this is the properties are really required uh, to, uh, particularly when we have a self-cleaning uh, property requirement from a lubricant. So, this kind of particle uh, will take away also the some sort of uh, dirt or uh, when we uh, want to clean the surface. While uh, spreading uh, is goes in a surface, so it does not really uh, take away the, all the dirt or it does not have a self cleaning properties. In addition it should repel the, in the particularly the water and or maybe some sort of uh, liquid which are not good for the surface, it, it should not cause a corrosion of the surface and we say that it is also it should not cause any uh, surface degradation. So, this is uh, uh, what we say in the case physical adsorption, chemical adsorption possible, but there should be balance of the chemical adsorption and coming to the in situ um, lubrication 
we should have uh, the, the particles in a manner which are really reaching and getting spreaded properly. As I say the next few slides I will be trying to explain those things. On top of that we required uh, one additional property hydrophobic property that it should not really spread on a surface it should remain in a molecular form. So, these things are really required coming to the life cycle of the this kind of lubrication we say the creation of the film will be there. Elimination is also there, so and the absorption, then elimination, and finally replacement band. And we really need to control on that. Whatever the formation, elimination, and again uh, formation, it should have a complete balance so that uh, nano lubrication remains intact for its life cycle. So these things are important uh, to uh, to keep a balance uh, to get overall good properties. Now. I am just trying to give one example of uh, nanoparticles which have been utilized for IC engine because in IC engine we know there is a boundary lubrication, there is a mixed lubrication, there is a EHL, there is a HL also. So, that is why the, they are using now the, the lubricant in this case particularly they tried with a 5W30 uh, uh, base oil lubricant with a nano additives and nano additives again uh, they will go for the sedimentation. So, that is why they use a surfactant oleic acid as a surfactant. So, that is what are the properties uh, kinematic properties in this case uh, viscosity uh, at the 0 uh, when we are not using any additive uh, the kinematic viscosity is around uh, 54 centi stroke when they use a 98 percent oil and 2 percent oleic again little bit uh, increase in the viscosity. But uh, this is a graphene nanoparticle they are adding. Uh, and then the initial is a 0 0.03, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 percent. So, they tried it and then as I mentioned oleic acid has been used as a surfactant. So, the particles remain in suspension they should not get sedimented because we know that sedimentation initially the performance will be good, but after few hours it performance will deteriorate badly. So, this is a what they did have experiments on a gasoline engine all the parameters have been defined over here. And, uh, in addition uh, when we are using about the graphene nanoparticle they they have a uh, some sort of uh, water absorption capacity. I have seen that particularly if there is a some water graphene really works very well it really gives a very good property. So, water gets absorbed by the graphene uh, and then we will have a lesser chance of the getting corrosion or, or maybe rusting on the surface. So, this is the data which says indicated that base oil and then uh, graphene you are able to see that uh, wear rate is reduced from these are the black particularly when we they are using only for the base oil and this is the red color has been shown uh, the reduction. However, again we are showing that whatever the particle or whatever the percentage they are using it is only for the some condition. If you change a condition here you they, they when they are loaded with the 350 newton graphene uh, particles are not showing much good results. So, naturally percentage of the particle and what is the really size of the particle both will be important and that has been shown in this uh, friction coefficient. They are shown particularly one condition uh, on the uh, particularly sliding speed has been mentioned over here and then they are showing the two different uh, load condition to 16 to 185 in Newton. They, they have shown clearly that, uh, that every level uh, at a higher load uh, coefficient of friction is uh, le uh, lesser compared to the uh, lower load the load dependence also comes. Another one the 0.4 percent which uh, was done in this case that shows the lowest coefficient of friction and that to the both the load. So, there is a more robustness. So, we really require the robustness also we really require a right percentage. So, we are saying that only keep adding the graphene particles will give a good result that is not that has been shown here the 0.6 percent that coefficient of friction is increasing again. So, there will be always an optimum that is why we really require the regression models that is why we require a machine learning. So, we get optimum results in uh, all the scenarios. Now, what are the different mechanism? We say the particles can be in a spherical shape. So, in that situation rolling mechanism will dominate and this is the best with the spherical particle and then uh, we are getting this kind of uh, um, mechanism that is the best because the lowest coefficient of friction will come. Our one is a mending effect particularly we know the mending means the repair or damaging of the broken things. So, they try to occupy the surface valleys and then uh, whatever we are trying to do with the surface texturing 
uh, if you are using nanoparticle all the grooves or uh, the sur surface valleys uh, they will can get a, a this kind of lubricant and we wanted to retain this lubricant particle or lubricant so that works in this case. So, here it is a nanoparticle is very useful here nanoparticles also very useful coming to the polishing and particularly in ceramic cases they they uh, occupy the asperities contour also and you look at this because of the asperities what will happen opponent surfaces will get polished. So, that is why we say the polishing mechanism and polishing mechanism we know this kind of uh, going to improve the surface uh, roughness and it will really give the good results to us. Last one is uh, making a protective film that is a nanoparticle they really try to connect it with each other and they form the film also. So, we really do not really require a separate coating technology to make a, I mean, to make a, a film while uh, in this case nanoparticle can occupy those surfaces because of affinity because of the um, interaction between a surface and we really require right particles for that purpose. So, this can be done. So, there are four um, common mechanism we say rolling mechanism, mending mechanism, uh, polishing mechanism and protective firm and they are something uh, which really need to be accounted. We say appropriate particle size of the ceramic nanoparticle must be compatible with the roughness of the coating surface. Here we say the particle diameter must be smaller than average surface roughness. What will happen if the particle size is bigger, larger, what will happen? The surface will get a rougher. So, particle size need to be smaller that means, even we choose a many times a smaller particle because of the agglomeration then particle size becomes a very big. So, nanoparticles may start rubbing uh, and making the surface rough. So, we need to avoid this chance we say there should not be agglomeration of the particles. Another one uh, we found that a nanoparticle if they are very small in a size they also do not function properly that means, uh, uh, they go ahead with the more mending mechanism rolling will not occur, polishing may not occur, protective firm may not occur also and in this case particularly the effect will not be very good or may be uh, countable. So, particle size should not be very small. So, in this case particularly the roughness is a 3 micron something and if I start using uh, then maybe say 0 0.01 micron or 0 0.001 micron particle it will not give me the good results. So, that it should match surface roughness and the particle size should be matching in a manner so that we particle size are smaller but not too smaller compared to the surface roughness. Now, what are the other things? So, we say that um, particularly whether you are using carbon nanotube or some sort of uh, 2D uh, two, uh, plane materials or 2D materials. So, in this case let us take example of carbon nanotube first is the possibility of rolling reason being that um, or whatever the nanoparticles we are using we are assuming kind of a spherical or spherical shape they start rolling with uh, uh, surfaces. So, that is the best mechanism that is why I say it. second one is a sliding as such you can see here in this case this surface is a sliding on uh, the blue color and as the sliding happens this particle will not roll while only surface will roll this may be uh, giving slightly higher friction compared to the rolling action. Next one is uh, exfoliation which happens particularly graphene or as I say 2D two, uh, two particles. What happened because of the sliding motion this uh, layer by layer will come out and will get uh, deposited on a surface as, as I mentioned earlier the layer gets deposited, but also will be eliminated both. So, in this situation what will happen over the period nanoparticles will get depleted from uh, oil or lubricating oil and we need to again add or recondition or may be uh, change the lubricant. So, that is why I say process of the exfoliation and transfer the film which happens mostly the nanoparticles um, involves the deposition of this layer onto the rough surface. Of course, they will uh, minimize the wear, they will reduce the friction that is why we say that it will facilitate smooth shearing. However, uh, prolonged time of the exfoliation ultimately leads to impair the interfacial nanoparticles resulting deterioration of tribological properties. So, naturally with the time if this process is a continuation again and again nanoparticles are getting in the form of the layers and is spreading on the surface and from there again is getting eliminated naturally the nanoparticle percentage will come down and we need to really uh, change oil or do needful things. Now, one more point as I mentioned the nano grease 
I say uh, reason being that uh, we want to enhance our longevity, uh, we want the lubricant to be kept for the very long time and that too uh, it should be uh, we need to develop a lubricant in a manner we do not have to replenish a lubricant at all for the very long time and that is why the many people say that use a lubricant for lifetime use that is there that is why the nano grease comes in a big way and particularly this is getting more popularity particularly the when we are talking about uh, the vehicle electric vehicles. So, it can uh, substantially save the cost because we really do not really require to change the lubricant and then because of the sometimes the lubricant absence the component need to be closed or the shut down and maybe go for the maintenance. So, we do not really require a need for the emergency maintenance if you are using the nano grease and that can uh, go far with the many many um, cycles. Most common is a lithium grease which is can provide a robust lubrication reason being it is a well suited for metal to metal application and then it is a really provide a robust lubrication and one of the slide earlier mentioned that uh, this grease uh, up to 85 percent of the grease are mostly lithium greases. And then it has a excellent temperature um, resilience and it also provide a production against the rust and corrosion. So, this grease is very important. Now, we add some sort of nanoparticles to increase a further is a thermal conductivity or longevity or maybe the wear resistant or extreme uh, lubricant conditions. So, that is possible. So, that is why we see that uh, there is a one paper which uh, have they have made around point uh, the different kind of uh, nano additives in that. In one case, they have used a 0.4 percent uh, graphene oxide or reduce uh, um, graphene oxide. So, we can say NCGA, another one they use a calcium carbonate 5 percent and then we can say that as a NCGB and in third case they use aluminum uh, oxide as a ceramic particles we can say NCGC. And of course, in addition they use a some sort of uh, titanium oxide and silicon oxide particles, but what best results they got from RGO only they say that RGO is giving around 45 percent uh, EP properties. Uh, earlier as I mentioned that uh, no EP additives need to be replaced with the nanoparticles. So, they have proven that it is uh, at 44, 45 percent contribution comes coming to the calcium carbonate this goes only 25 percent. So, naturally we will be requiring a kind of a RGO uh, nano lubricant which will be giving the good results as such. In addition they have mentioned particularly the friction reduction is around 60 percent. So, it has anti friction property, it has anti wear property, it has extreme pressure properties also. So, naturally this kind of lubricant uh, or maybe nano graces can be utilized for future purpose. Question comes how do we say this, how the lubricant uh, is really giving a kind of a thickness or layer on a surface. Maybe we do some sort of experiment, but it may have a happen in one experiment lubricant layer is getting formed, other case it is not getting formed. So, that is why we require a sophisticated equipment also. So, one Raman spectroscope is one of the equipment which can really provide some sort of a detail not only the uh, we say even the wear debris we can find out whether the layer is getting transferred or not and uh, we really require this kind of uh, instrumentation. We have another one SCM, but of course, in these days we say SCM may not give very good result. We require a TM uh, when we are talking about uh, nano tribology. Coming to the nano coatings already we mentioned here. Now, nano coating again uh, has a lot of variation to some extent we have discussed this in lecture 13. We say PVD layer, CVD and the chrome layer and then it is a multifunctional layer. Now, we do not really require only one coating, we really require many many coatings and then it can be 1 nanometer, 2 nanometer. So, these are very important. Now, that is why we say that uh, this nano coating are extremely thin layers of the coating as I mentioned of the 1 nanometer, 2 nanometer. They can have a multiple properties by giving a different different layer. One layer is only for hardness, other one is a layer for the chemical resistance or maybe in the, the nickel layer something or chromium layer the water does not get a ingress to the surface. To cover material surface to offer improved protection, so we have a, a protection against the corrosion and then uh, we can have a some sort of uh, in, in like a polymer layer but it should not uh, cause more scratches and wear 
again that is a possible or maybe the we have a some sort of a layer that which repels the water or some layers which have a self cleaning capabilities. So, this has the nano coating now or uh, doing uh, the research is going on on this kind of coatings and the results uh, are also favorable. Now, one more thing comes uh, when you are talking about the coating actually the material choice plays an important role. What do we want and often the materials are combined it is not only one kind of material and then uh, we require the materials to increase the mechanical strength, increase uh, thermal stability increase a uh, kind of uh, protection or barrier qualities. So, these are the important things and that is why we say that number of properties are possible and if look at even the rolling element bearing now they are going with the 3 layers of 4 layer of the coating. We have seen uh, in the one of the sliding bearing the 3, uh, three metallic layering in this case. We need to think about our nanomaterial synthesis. So, when the whatever particles we are getting, if they are not synthesized properly, if they are not made in the in a proper shape or size, then it will not really give the good results. So, many times people uh, then grind it to the 1 micron to 10 micron. So, there is a, some sort of distribution and then uh, they do a coating on the surface. It may improve the results, but may not give the optimum results. So, that is why again uh, some sort of modeling is really required which particle size, which particle shape is going to really give a good results. Sometimes spherical particle instead of a spherical particle we go with irregular particle. So, that um, uh, overall uh, densification increases that is important also. Now, when they do preparation of the coating after synthesis naturally the formulation of uh, additional element like you know what will be the binder, how they will bind, what are the solvent, what are the dispersant. These are the additives which are really required. So, it is not a simple coating technology or coating um, technique, but how do we formulate what kind of materials shall we select and then after usage what kind of the post curing should be done. So, those are important which say coating application curing post treatment and then when this is a what we say that TAM and uh, AFM kind of things are really required. We need to do a characterization of whatever we have done that is right or wrong and then uh, every coating will have a different kind of a drying process it need to be optimized. So, again this subject as such coating itself I do believe that there are a number of books on the coating. They, we really required a lot of uh, and the modeling in this and experiments again uh, one process may not fit for all. So, again uh, that requires a little more detailed knowledge. Coming to the characterization of the thin coating and we have a good number of equipment available um, across uh, the, the number of labs. We say it is a composition characterization and a structure how the coating has been structured because overall lizards will depend on that. What equipment really be required? Equipment must be capable of extracting data from individual microstructural attributes. Often uh, and then the, the, the dimension of this coating is only 1 micron or smaller of course, I am not talking about the 1 nanometer also. Now, equipment must be capable to uh, acquire data exclusively uh, at the outermost layer that is atomic layer and that is why we are saying about the 1 nanometer. AFM has been used uh, extensively particularly for that because AFM has a number of uh, different attachments it can for in the measure of the friction force it can really give the complete surface roughness also and then it can really uh, show that how the profile will get generated when the one surface is moving other other surface also. So, we say that uh, uh, AFM that is uh, atomic force microscopy it can be contact type it can be non contact type particularly when we are talking about the non contact type everything is we are converting to the images and then uh, we are taking image of the movement of the cantilever and uh, the, the roughness of the resolution up to 1 uh, nanometer can be achieved using this kind of thing. So, this uh, is a kind of a surface profilometer can be uh, can be used as a surface profilometer it can give the roughness of the 1 nanometer. In addition uh, there is a some sort of uh, image uh, the face image uh, contrast can be utilized for the whether it is a heterogeneous or maybe the homogeneous and then it really figure out whether it is line amorphous domains. It can really go different kind of the boundaries also. So, that is very really required when we are manufacturing uh, using one coating with the one uh, manufacturing technique similar coating similar material similar uh, particle size with a different coating uh, method 
then we are trying to figure out which one coating is really giving good results, other coating is not giving good results. So, this kind of tools are really required to uh, give an explanation on those aspects. I am just showing a one figure uh, from a literature. You can see that the surface atoms are arranged over here and this is a uh, AFM part and this is a cantilever which is very elastic and as it moves on the, on the molecules it deflects and that deflection is uh, captured and that deflection is captured and that gives a surface profile to us. That means even the 1 nanometer or maybe even lesser that surface roughness can be measured. So, what we say AFM to obtain the precise uh, 3D image of coated in this case they tried with a phosphate surface at nano scale and then uh, there are a uh, microscopic force sensor this is what we say the cantilever will be connected with a force sensor to detect the force uh, between uh, finally pointed uh, sharp peak points this is a sharp point what are, they are mentioning and the surface of the sample during the scanning to create a picture. Now, this uh, probe sample interaction yields a significant insight on many things. Now, if we try to analyze, we will get a many things like morphology. We can find out the mechanical strength by changing slightly uh, this uh, cantilever and then using different kind of sensor, we get a many, many additional thing to this. So, this can provide a surface analysis. It can provide also coating thickness maybe you know, as I say that we can go with the scratching and how much scratching is done and then uh, what will be the coating thickness that is also possible. It can go with the surface modification and as the way we have modified uh, earlier. Now, this AFM can be modified to some extent and it can be utilized as a surface modification tool that is also possible. It measures uh, elasticity, it can measure the addition, it can measure the hardness. So, there are as I say one atomic force microscopy is a one, but it has a number of attachment with the various uh, softwares and then with the algorithms, it can really provide extensive details to us. One uh, AFM uh, image has been shown here. This is the AFM image of the freshly cleaved uh, surface of highly oriented uh, graphite and uh, this uh, is a resolution is up to the atomic level and you can see here po uh, 0 0.1 nanometer, 0 0.2 nanometer. This is important and uh, really required a, as I say the separate subject to understand the complete nano tribology and then go for the resolution. However, as we were talking about the nanoparticles which are nano level and that is our interest that has been shown with using AFM in this case. So, one experiment has been done with the raw oil, other experiment with the raw oil plus 25 nanometer uh, particle and third experiment with a 60 nanometer particle. They have plotted a coefficient of friction over here and uh, now with a normal load. You can see uh, normal load is uh, as a the increasing coefficient of friction is coming down and then subsequently increasing. To simulate this similar manner they have used against a, a, a stripe curve where the, we know the mu and p. So, sometimes they do analogy with the stripe curve how it is happening and what should be the optimum point as such of operation. So, this is a what has been shown and then this is the coefficient of friction and they have shown a wear or a kind of a, a, the, the groove formation on a component. So, that is why I say the AFM image of the friction surface of the friction test with uh, uh, the, this is a oil uh, and then this is the uh, nanoparticle and they clearly indicates that this causes a lesser wear compared to this case. First the A and the B has a lesser wear compared to the A. However, it needs to be quantified so the image is to be taken and then from image we need to find out the what will be the overall uh, wear rate in this situation. One more uh, common thing is a TEM and we use extensively this TEM is a transmission electron microscope. I am not covering much. It has been complete chapter has been given in ASM handbook and that uh, uh, this uh, and the, the, the time has been explained uh, in detail. We see the time enables visualization of the surface features of the material of the nano scales and now it can be nanoparticle, nanocrystal, nanostructure coating. So, that is a very you very useful and of course, again it is really a go has goes as with the concentrated stream of the electron uh, to pass through the sa specimen sample. So, that we can even see individual crystallographic planes and atoms and uh, we can find out what are the shape and how the things uh, work at the nano level. 
So, naked eye we cannot see, uh, we can just generally see more than 50 micron, but in this situation we are able to see what is really happening at the grain levels or atomic level or molecular level naturally that will really enhance our understanding about the tribology that is why the TAM is really required. So, TAM offers a significant advantage in terms of resolution when we talk about the SCM uh, we extensively use. Compared to SCM, it uh, goes in very high, uh, much more resolution. It gives a result even up to the 10 nanometer, and uh, we have seen 10 nanometer, 30 nanometer, depends on that kind of the time which we are using. In uh, one uh, experiment we did, and we found the graphene is not giving very good results. And then we analyzed that using the time, and we found particularly because of the uneven and complicated shape was observed in a graphene and it is not really making the lubricant thin layer, it is a kind of the bulk layer and then because of the high surface sharpness. That is what has been shown here, you can see here the graphene sheet in the completely crumpled shape and then if it is not done properly or it is in a, in a, in a surface roughness is not very good, naturally it will not give a good results. In that situation particularly we got a good results from HPN, reason being that the, they are not getting very agglomerated and they are distributed. Well, MOS2 we also found a problem, reason being there was a lot of agglomeration. So, how do you find? agglomeration, crumpled shape that comes with the TEM. That is why we say that we use extensively TEM compared to AFM and it really provide a good results to us. So, let me uh, write a few lines on the TEM. We say it can provide a coating structure of the TEM. It can really provide a coating substrate interaction. We can see if there is a some surface uh, substrate here and if you are using 1 nanometer coating and then how it will get embedded, how much it is really entering in here and here, here, here that also comes out. So, this really gives a very clear visualization of the what we want to achieve, are we achieving, if it is not achieving then whether what are the controlling parameter, can we play with those controlling parameter that gives a more depth. In addition, it provides a assessment of the coating uniformity also and then if there is a possibility of the coating degradation, it really provides an insight into this. However, this cannot be done in situ, that is an unfortunate thing and in future we are thinking about using good kind of uh, microscope in situ and use a good software or using machine learning artificial intelligence, so that we can get a this kind of results in situ. However, whatever we are getting is after the doing the test, not a during running condition. If you are able to really achieve it during in situ operation or when during the operation itself, that will give a good uh, you know, age to us and we can improve technology in better form. One of the major issue with the TAM and AFM is that infrastructure requirement is the costly equipments causing one of the one more than one CR and then it really requires a non-stop uh, power supply, vacuum system, cooling system, vibration free floor, there should not be any vibration otherwise we will not get a good results from that. So, these are the important thing. In some cases we use also that MOS2 and we found that uh, MOS2 uh, the, the surface variation of the aspirity or valleys particularly MOS2 particle occupies the space and lubricant layer remains on the top of that. So, they really reduce the coefficient of friction to a significant level and when we do this kind of analysis we are able to get a good result. As I in one of the earlier slide, I use the word is Raman spectroscopy. It was uh, invented by Indian scientist uh, C. V. Raman in 1928, and what he uh, discovered is Raman effect. What is the meaning of that? So, and say when there is a uh, light is uh, impeached or maybe say irrad radiated on the surface, then small fraction of this radiated light will go for inelastic uh, um, shift. So that shift in a wavelength uh, can be related with the chemical structure. That was uh, was mentioned of course, that time the technology was not that high level. Now, the more and more technology uh, has a progress and more filter have uh, come out and then we are able to really connect with the uh, chemical structure. So, that is why we say the Raman spectroscopy utilizes scattered light to gain knowledge about the molecular vibration and then here the we say every molecule or the structure or group will have some sort of vibration phenomena and then if there is a back is scattered or uh, the light is getting scattered that if it is noted 
then it will give a good results. What is the meaning of that? This is called what we call elastic scattering. That's a really uh, scattering. And another one is inelastic. Now, inelastic, what we are using some energy wavelength, and then return energy is less. While in other case, uh, energy uh, the has been given, return energy is on a higher side. So these are the some characteristics, and then if we have a sufficient tools, that's why we say to keep high signal to noise ratio. Sometimes we use uh, laser spectroscopy. And then very efficient filter to suppress elastically scattered uh, because we are not interested in elastically scattered uh, really light and we really required only the what is the inelastic phenomena happening and inelastic phenomena can be connected with the chemical structure of the molecules. So that is why they really give the good results. In uh, short, we can say scattering caused by the irradiation of the molecules with a monochromatic light. Again, we use we do not use a white light and we use a monochromatic light so that uh, analysis is a uh, much easier and that can be categorized as elastic scattering and elastic uh, scattering. In elastic scattering, no change in energy as I mentioned will occur, uh, will frequency also will remain same, wavelength will be same. In elastic uh, scattering, in elastic scattering, there will be shift in the photon frequency due to excitation and deactivation of the molecular vibration. So, excitation energy will be extra, deactivation will be lesser. So, either it is getting exciting uh, and, uh, higher energy or getting a uh, deactivated lesser energy and that can be connected with the corresponding uh, uh, chemical structure of molecules. Of course, it really requires a good software, good database, then only we can interpret the results otherwise we will not be able to interpret the results. However, we are equipment which can be utilized. We have also two uh, monochromatic uh, light sources and then uh, the results are slightly different. However, we mostly use FTIR for the results and I am just showing one of the, uh, the research publication which was uh, published in uh, 2023. We try to find out uh, FTIR of our uh, degraded oil. You can see there is a number 1, number 2, number 3. So, and then 3 oils were uh, um, compared, fresh oil and uh, mechanically only sheared oil and oil which are having uh, some sort of uh, acid that were compared. We are getting the responses of 3 cow and wherever there is a separation between the uh, so separation of there is a one curve of the fresh oil, other one is uh, for the mechanical sheared oil and third curve is related to SCL. If they are superimposing each other then we do not have to see that. However, we are finding here that at one place there is a deviation, at second place there is a deviation and third place also there is a deviation. If there is a perfect matching, we do not have to analyze and in one case you are able to see there is a separate peak coming around 723, separate peak coming, coming around 879. Here in the second case, we are able to see 1720 peaks, 1732, so there is a separation and the last third case, we are able to see that there is a separation of 3401. Now, this is to be interpreted. Uh, properly. Now, we as I use the uh, word FTIR not a Raman spectroscopy, we use uh, this Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy to examine again the molecular vibration mode whatever the Raman uh, similar kind of things we are trying to do in this case. It really provides a functional grouping whether there will be OH group or there is a some sort of acidic group. So, that can be done with the FTIR. So, FTIR absorbs infrared radiation at a different frequencies corresponding to the vibrational mode of the chemical bond. So, there are bonds and there will be some sort of uh, vibrational phenomena and then there will be uh, response on that. So, we, we say the peak observed in this case 1, 2, 3 we are observing only the peaks. Peak observed in FTIR spectrums are the indicative of the distinct vibrational modes that is why the something has changed maybe some OH bond has come, some OC bond has come. So, those kind of things can be done in this case and distinct functional group exhibit a unique adsorption uh, frequency exhibiting identification of the chemical linkage. Now, if I try to give uh, an explanation on this figure, we see the formation of oxide uh, product uh, particularly in this case, we are able to see the degradation where lubricant is getting oxide oxidized and then uh, here in uh, next one is the increase of the uh, water. and uh, that is uh, why the OH stretching is happening there that can be done. So, similarly, we can analyze this kind of uh, additives or uh, um, in the nan nano level what is really happening in the lubricant level. If the oxide formation happens, 
actually now that can be the surfaces which have been where the this lubricant was used twice that can be used uh, or can be monitored using the TAM and the TAM will really provide a good results. As I mentioned that uh, this lubrication analysis can be used in situ where the operation is on I can collect the sample and can go for the in situ operation. So, that is easier. Well, time kind of thing which really required some uh, component to break in a smaller specimen and then take to the lab and then take some time and sometimes people will see say that it may get oxidized during the shifting from one lab to other lab. So, so in future we require a TAM or AFM kind of equipment which can be fixed in situ and then we can monitor uh, immediately that what is really happening that will be giving more reliable results compared to oil analysis. Otherwise, we are also doing the wear debris analysis. We are trying to figure out what happens to the wear debris, what kind of coating is getting the on the wear debris surfaces. Now, coming to the why uh, we use FTA or Raman, I find more or less uh, similar kind of results are there. Now, in this case, uh, we are showing a calculated Raman, FT Raman. Now, there is a some shift. Here, uh, whatever the software calculation, theoretical calculation is gives, it is coming over here, this peak. While and when we observe it is there is a some shift. However, naturally there are uh, independent uh, bonds and then the connected bonds. One bond will affect other bond also that need to be analyzed. That is why we say that this software will turn out to be um, the very uh, complicated because we uh, have a suppose 10 different uh, chemical bonds and then because of the other 9 bonds this bond also will change some sort of characteristics. So, if you are not getting exactly uh, the same characteristic the calculated value then there is a possibility of other bond and that need to be examined. Same thing with the calculated IR and FTIR you are able to see 1869 where we were supposed to get some response. So now, we are getting on the 1770. Now, this is because of the other presence of other bonds as a shifting. So, that need to be accounted when we are using this kind of uh, uh, equipment. There are some sort of difference has been written uh, uh, definition we say in Raman spectroscopy is uh, basically uh, lying on uh, in elastic scattering measurement. In this case again uh, we uh, try to see the what is the energy which has been scattered coming to sensitivity this is uh, more sensitive towards a homo nuclear molecular bond while this is a heteronuclear functional groups. So, we uh, are going hard with the hetero more and more because we are trying to figure out what is really happening to the uh, lubricant that is why we use FTR coming to the Raman spectroscopy. But uh, nano coating on the wear debris can be seen using the Raman spectroscopy that is very effective tool can be utilized in a big way. Now, what are the challenges? Uh, whatever we have discussed, we have a lot of challenges that is why we again see the nanotub is a separate subject. Now, what are the challenges? We have uh, experimented on the lab level which are showing also effectiveness including the vapor uh, phase uh, lubrication and then nanoparticle uh, lubrication also that is showing. But how do we resolve on a real case? Because in real case there will be a some sort of uh, uh, sedimentation of particles or some sort of vapor which is not really going to the right places that need to be experimented well because the situation will be different. In lab we are able to control many parameter in reality we are not able to control those. The next one is the hard coating even though the which hard coating because we know the increase in a hard coating will cause a more and more uh, uh, brittle nature will cause a more possibility of delamination. So, those nicks also need to be uh, connected so, the we are manufacturing but in one go is fine but the, the shape changes again the parameter need to be changed and every shape requires a different kind of trials. We say optimal coating material and technique yet to be developed for practical implementation and few labs may have done it, but uh, it is not available in wide literature. Coating must exhibit a strong adherence to the, um, the surfaces we, uh, we already mentioned if I am going for a high co hardness, but if it gets delaminated from a uh, surface then it will not be very useful. Now, we say even distribution of coating is a major issue and then uh, that to a firmly embedding on a coating is also an issue. So, these are the some issues in addition uh, uh, again there will be some sort of a stresses on the surface 
there will be some sort of a difference in a thermal expansion or that depends also on the particle sizes how much uh, the, the what is the smallest particle we have. So, those are also problem however, in my uh, view misalignment has been a major major issue and because of the misalignment or no misalignment same coating behaves quite different manner and that is a really very difficult to detect we are talking about a point not 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 uh, uh, one uh, degree misalignment something like that. So, we say that um, there are uh, uh, nano lubrication we have not yet confined all the subjects uh, nano lubrication is something that are much more diverse compared to the tribology or lubrication and a special emphasis should be given, but this is very very relevant to our topic and in future I am sure that machine learning or artificial intelligence will be very useful for the nano lubrication. With this I say thank you for attending this lecture, thank you.